Hey, good morning, everybody. It's February the 18th. It is uh, about 8.30 in the morning. I'm still in the truck stop. Uh, we're going to roll out of here probably about another hour and a half, two hours or so. But uh, I want to make a video today talking about weight distribution as it relates to sliding your fifth wheel, okay? Now, as I've mentioned in previous videos about other things, this is going to be no different. I'm not going to get into showing you how to do it because, A, it's been done over and over and over again here on YouTube. And B, if you have a good driver trainer, you should be taught how to do it when you're out with your trainer. But I'm going to give you some tips and things about uh, weight distribution as it relates to your fifth wheel. And because um, I actually I had to slide mine. So we're going to take a look at some scale tickets. And I'm going to point out some things to you. So let me flip this camera around and we'll get started. Okay guys, so what you're looking at here is the scale ticket from my first way. Okay? I pulled right into the truck stop, I went right up on the scale. And this is these are my numbers, okay? So you can see I'm over on my steer axle, not by much, 280 pounds, but all my other numbers are good and my gross weight is good. So let me just tell you, I scaled this it was uh, about 8:30 at night, okay? So I scaled this, and I knew all the scales were going to be closed. So what I did was, I got my scale ticket, I looked at my numbers. I saw I was over, but I didn't worry too much about it. So what I did was, I, I fueled the truck, I fueled my dev tank, and I fueled my reefer, and I went down the road about 150 miles, and I shut down. Okay? Now, I've mentioned before, normally, 9 times out of 10, I'll run with this. But what I wanted to do was, because I had to switch trucks again... I wanted to get my fifth wheel set where I wanted it at. So, and most of the time, once you set that fifth wheel, you'll never have to mess with it again. But like I said, this was my original readout. So I fueled the truck, def tank, and reefer, and I rolled down the road about 150 miles, shut down. And then what I did was I got up the next morning and I slid my fifth wheel, and then I drove 10 miles to the truck stop. And I scaled the load again. So let me grab the, the second way. Okay, now this is the scale ticket from the reway. Now again, keep in mind this is with full tanks of fuel, full tank, uh, a full tank of def, and a full reefer. Okay. Now you can see I I slid my fifth wheel back. So you can see now I'm legal on my steers, I'm legal on my drives, and I'm legal on my trailer. I actually have being that this number is kind of getting close to 34 I have wiggle room on my trailer which tells me I could actually slide my trailer axle forward and take some more weight off of this to just give me a little bit of extra insurance but you can see now based on the two scale tickets now look just look at the gross weight 77,460 was my original weight before I got fuel after I got fuel 77,900 so you can see what kind of effect getting fuel can have. So if you're close on your drives, you know, obviously your fuel tanks are right near your drives, so it's going to affect that. If you're close on your drive axle, you may only want to get three quarters of fuel. You know what I mean? Don't fill up, don't fill up both tanks to the top or fill only one tank. You know, there's times where if you're close on your gross weight, you may have to do that. Okay. So now let me, let me just, uh, I got some illustrations I want to show you to just kind of explain the fifth wheel and how it works. Okay, let's take a look at my illustrations here. And obviously these aren't to scale. I got my cab over here. <laughs> and they're, they're, they are exaggerated for illustration purposes, okay? Basically, you know, you picture your fifth wheel right here. Okay? Now, according to this first scale ticket, I was 12,280. I was too heavy on my steer axle. So I needed to put weight on my drive axle and take it off the steer axle to make it legal. So what you do is you, you slide your fifth wheel toward the back of the truck. And what that does, you have to think of it like a pendulum, which is kind of what I tried to illustrate with my handy dandy drawings here, okay? Sliding your fifth wheel back will put more weight on your drive tires because it picks up on the front of the truck, so it takes weight off your steers. So remember, sliding it back equals more weight on your drive axle, less weight on your steer axle. So now it's obviously it's not rocket science, but if you slide it forward, slide it toward the front of the truck, 
okay you're taking weight off of your drives and you're putting it onto your steer axle okay so remember forward equals more weight on the steer axle less on the drive axle and like i said you got to think of it like a pendulum because that's pretty much what it, what you're doing when you're when you're sliding your uh fifth wheel so basically again just to show you when i started out here at 12 280 okay what i ended up doing was ah, i slid the fifth wheel back toward the back of the truck and what happened i put more weight on my drives and i took it off my steer axle and that gave me this number right here and that's actually that's a really good number you know so um okay let me flip this camera around and i'll be right back okay so in a nutshell that's pretty much how your fifth wheel works you know i apologize if i just com confuse the crap out of you it's really not that hard guys um but i wanted to show you one other thing i filmed the clip underneath the truck yesterday while it was still daylight out and uh i just want you guys to take a look at a couple things that that you know, I think you need to be aware of on your fifth wheel. So let's check that out, and then I'll come back and we'll wrap this video up. Okay, so right here, you're looking at your fifth wheel lock pins. And uh, when you release it inside the truck, those, those pins will pull in. And that will allow your fifth wheel to move back and forth. Each one of those holes represents a different amount of weight. So, uh, you know, you, it's different on every truck, so you kind of have to feel your way on that one. But I just wanted to show you, right along this channel, you want to keep that lubricated. Because what happens is all your grease and everything from your fifth wheel kind of flops down on there over time. And then it, you know, because most of the, most likely once you set your fifth wheel, you're not going to have to move it again. So, uh, but you want to lube this. If you do have to move it, you want to lube this channel on both sides. All the holes, the pins, and the channel. And it'll kind of free up that grease. And then what you want to do is drop your landing gear until you hear your bags your airbags right here hear your airbags start to hiss and then crank it a few more times you don't want full weight on that thing when you try to slide it but you don't want to unhook either so um, but yeah I just wanted to show you that so let me jump back in the truck okay so that's pretty much the deal with the fifth wheel and uh, one other thing I want to mention is just keep it in mind that when you slide your fifth wheel it's going to have very little if any effect at all on the weight on your trailer axle so don't think by if you're taking 500 pounds off of your steers and putting it on your drives that you're going to move your trailer 500 pounds too no that's not the case like i said it's going to have very little if any effect at all on your trailer so don't worry about that so if your trailer is good where it is just worry about sliding your fifth wheel okay and then just kind of deal with that. So just deal with it one section at a time, front and then rear. Uh, but I guess that's pretty much it. I apologize if this video really confused the crap out of everybody. It wasn't supposed to. Sometimes when you start playing with numbers and things like that, it can get kind of confusing. But it's it's really not that big a deal. But uh, as always, you guys know if you always have any questions, or if I should say if you ever have any questions, you can always reach out to me. You can email me, helpwithtrucking at hotmail.com. Or you can leave a comment on the video or whatever. So uh, I know this thing was kind of long, and I appreciate you know I appreciate it <laughs> if you watched it all the way through. So uh, I guess that's gonna do it for now. So uh, until next time, everybody, be good, be smart, be safe, and we'll see you down the road later on.